Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you all for being here. I'm Lubna Dajani. I'm Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. I'm Lubna Dajani. I have the an honor to, to meet all of you and to be here. Today, I'm hearing an echo. Um, okay, maybe it'll go. Um, today, we're starting with um, uh, our panel is Beyond Algorithm, Algorithms. <laughs> The impact of AI on global society, which is um, uh, AI AI ethics, have been at the heart of my work, and the social the impact of technology on human evolution and uh, and the role that it can play in advancing us to a better trajectory. So this is really an honor and a pleasure to be here. I am so grateful to be with such an amazing uh, set of people. Um, I would love to uh, have you each please introduce your yourselves. Uh, if I may, I'll uh, I'll just call on, on on you. Who should I who should I give that? Uh, Hannah Smile. So, uh, Hannah, why don't you start with us, and we'll take it from there. Sure. Hi everyone. My name is Hannah Marabi. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm the founder of Earth Angels nonprofit organization. Uh, founded it in 2012 with a mission to eradicate maternal and infant mortality, one mother and baby at a time. Currently building a fish farm in, in uh, rural Ghana to feed many and teach sustainable farming. It's nice to see you all today. Amazing, wow, I can't wait to talk to you some more. Um, Eva, Eva, do you wanna say hello? Unmute please. And Hello everyone, thank you for bringing me here to Sarah and get inspired with so many amazing brains and creators. Um, I'm focused in perception. I do visual references um, to make um, peer review content about changing the paradigm, the perceptual system to identify, identify unification and the holographic structure of reality and how we humans kind of 3D print reality in a holographic screen that is water substance that holds us in a fractal patterns that so I create uh, visuals instead of talk about it, uh, immersive experience, games, toys, uh, to remember the holographic uh, perception and take over your sovereignty uh, based in frequencies and resonance as the standard because you understand that you are immersed in water so you follow only what expands your inner water so your skin expands and you follow that instead of the hardware of thought. And for that I create a model uh, that I'm passing in AI for AI to identify th through wording which type of memory is conditioning the present perception. So you lose inner awareness and the capacity of loving and receive wholeness data. So all that, that sounds really kind of uh, <laughs> messy or new. I, I rather just showcase it in, in drawings and visual references so people can review it and declare truth as obvious when you perceive other realms that are uh, far from what the eye can see, that is only the 0.5% of what vibrates, that is everything. So that's my mission and make it in a joyful, playful manner with immersive experiences that can be printed or VR or whatever, <laughs> AR or toys or whatever. That's it's, my That is package. so super exciting. It is so super exciting. Emily, it's nice to see you again. Hi, Lumna. It's good to be back. Hello, yes. everybody. Um, super excited to be here at Gatherverse again. My name is Emily Wright. I am the creator of It'll Be All Right. I'm really interested to, to see how this panel goes. I found I algorithms really interesting. I wrote a book on the relationship between subconscious and algorithmic bias. I did an experiment looking at um, expression in the Spotify program and looking at the relationship between subconscious and algorithmic bias through music, um, which was really interesting. Um, I'm really interested in looking at how we can reprogram ourselves um, and by learning about the algorithms in our personal neural networks, and then how can we use that knowledge constructively to improve decision making. It's a, it's a, a, a great uh, topic. I, I usually try to describe, I say, you know, but, uh, um, a newborn is like, uh, an AI is like a newborn. It has, uh, it, it has uh, the DNA that it inherits, you know, the nature bit, and then the nurture, which is, the, and I liken that to the, to the data is, is the nurture. And um, the algorithmic biases that the biases of the developer that we don't even know. This is the scariest thing about biases is we don't realize how biased we actually are. But 
Um, I, um, Christina, I know uh, your voice is, is is struggling, and I'm so grateful for you to actually take the time. Um, I, I would give an intro for you, but I, I would like end up taking the rest of the time just to describe you. So please, if you can just try to give us a, 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 a small intro. Thank you, Lubna. I have no idea how I sound, and sometimes I can control it, sometimes not. And I constantly say that, you know, we have provocations in life. My voice is fighting me today to show me that, you know, building something huge, it will be always seen as something from someone that is something that needs to be destroyed. And so we need to be tough as women, as society, as those who are, are fighting the right fight to go through everything we need to in order to move on and high and elevate humanity to the next level where we can be. So shout out to Tech Leadership Lab, who is in the chat. I love you guys. We are a community. We are an action-oriented think tank. We are an entity that is building to solve quicker all the 17 SDGs, audacious goal, but we will do our part. And for this reason, AI, accesses and helps, enables, enhances everything we are doing. And this year we are focusing around climate, AI and humanity because solving those SDGs needs to tackle all of this three together. Thank you. And you sound beautiful actually. <laughs> Um, and forgive me, guys, if I mispronounce your name in any way. People always do that to me, but it's cool. Just don't call me Labna. So, uh, Najda, is that how you say it? <laughs> Please. I, I was going to call you that, so I'm glad that you corrected me before I, before I tried. I, I agree with you. That's always the most difficult. It's wonderful to speak to people from all around the world on a yes. on an almost daily basis when you work in you know in, in a global industry. But the biggest issue is how to pronounce their names. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very happy to be here. I very regularly speak at conferences. I work in the tech industry and I was just sitting here thinking, you know, it, it's, we were talking about biases. I get so used to a certain type of voice talking about technology and it's just absolutely wonderful to be here with this diverse group of women. Well, I mean, I, that was not necessarily by design. We just all happen to be women, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and it's wonderful to be able to really explore different aspects of the technology because as someone who works in the tech industry and, you know, arguably I work in investments, so very much so are we part of this vehicle that drives forward certain narratives in terms of what the public has access to because of the funding that uh, you know goes into these decisions? And it's just so incredibly important to bring everyone together when it comes to talking about AI. Because I think because of the decision-making powers of certain groups of people, it's so easy to almost fall into this fallacy and say, okay, only these voices have a platform and therefore only these voices should be listened to. So very happy to be here uh, today. We have wonderful uh, gatherers, just so many, uh, so much gratitude for, for bringing all these people together. Um, as for myself, uh, I started out uh, in a career in psychology, transitioned into marketing and from marketing into the tech industry, uh, Web3, and now very much AI is becoming something that is becoming part of the everyday narrative, um, especially in the investment world. It's almost impossible not to have AI in you know, every new startup that comes along. Um, so you know, just to reiterate then, I think it's incredibly important uh, to bring all of these different voices together. Um, and I think these are probably, this, the, this event itself is probably one of the most diverse group of voices uh, that I've been participating in uh, over this entire time. So very, very blessed and happy to be here. Thank you. And again, a shout out to Gatherverse for uh, uh, bringing on as many of us women uh, and uh, and generally underrepresented people uh, in, in like, such a gathering where we can have a voice and demonstrate the impact we are creating. Dr. Sh Shun uh, um, Shruti? <laughs> yes. So, uh, hi everyone. I'm Dr. Shruti Chaudhary. Uh, greetings from India. 
and it's good to see the lovely ladies across all the different locations of the world this is my first time to be the part of the gather world uh just a little bit about myself i work as a professor uh, in the university and my area of specialization is basically in marketing and information technology so i work in the amalgamations of both the things on one side i'm teaching the student the business and other side i'm also looking toward how the technology is actually transforming the whole world so where all these uh, you know the technology you all are talking about and working with so we try to teach the student how the world is transforming and where you can go about it and which are the things you have to prepare yourself rather than being afraid about it so my area of uh, research is basically related with the collaborative intelligence where i try to come up with a bridging uh, way where the students can learn about along with being an human how the technology can survive or with the technology how human can survive vice versa so we come up with uh, those types of a midway and these things we try to come up uh, in our different course curriculum as well as we try to taught the students in terms of when we are running a different types of a projects it's lovely meeting you and it's good to see all the beautiful ladies in the room looking forward for the panel discussion so thank you thank you thanks you yesterday when uh, we had a, a, another discussion where we talked a lot about ethics and and the role of ethics and how important and wondering whose ethics they are and we've talked about inclusion and diversity but what we are also living in 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 a time where there's so much suffering it seems that's why i was so happy when i spoke with eva about happiness and joy and how technology or ai can help us bring that out and how we need to lead with that but how how do you think or with what ways and i rather than imposing my opinions on it and for for this uh, i i just would love and any of you just unmute your mic and i will uh, um and and please go ahead and but how do you think or how are you seeing that we can use ai and 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 i think ai is is part of a stack you know so the entire stack of technology whether it's web3 or metaverse um you know immersive i should you know metaverse is for immersive in general web3 uh, and particularly ai um can help us maybe ask the right questions as then we have so much data out there data is being generated all over the place all the time but not just by us or about us but even about by the networks that are um enabling us but how ai could help us um and related technologies shrink this um the digital divide as it were to uh, amplify the voices of the unheard um and help us address the social challenges that we ourselves have created um uh, for ourselves and with the climate um dr chant you want to just go ahead or naja you uh Yeah, I can I can get us started. Um I think, you know, I the, the way I think about this is it's almost as if you're walking through the closet and you find yourself in a different world because depending on where you are in the world uh socio-politically and uh your class and your education level in society, reality can look very different. Um so I had a recent interaction with uh, I'm from South Africa I I don't live there but I'm from there originally so I go home to visit and I had a conversation recently with uh, a, a taxi driver an Uber driver um he was asking you know what do I do since I travel I think I was going to the airport um and we started talking about web3 and he had heard of bitcoin um didn't know anything other than you know having heard of it and then the conversation shifted to ai and i started talking about chatgpt um and it was it it almost felt like i was experiencing the joy of discovery uh second hand by virtue of him just hearing about this technology because he couldn't fathom for a second what am i talking about and the more i spoke about it the more excited he became to go and try it out and these light bulb moments um i treasure them because i think in a day to day basis because of the nature of my work i i i 
you know, work with ideas very early before they become public. And so I almost take for granted how easy it is to have access to technologies. And so I think with generative AI, we've taken a massive leap in terms of access. The Web3 industry has tried people, any people, all people, whoever they may be, into this ecosystem. But because for the most part that, that, that motivation was driven by greed, okay, we wanted to make as big a profit as possible, as quickly as possible, it had a short lifespan. With AI, on the other hand, it augments our brains or it has the possibility to augment our brains. And this has massive implications. We've lost your audio. Um, uh, are you are you able to hear me now? Okay, yes. But uh, I'll I'll just wrap up. Um, so I think you know having access to these kind of transformative technologies, um, it's so incredibly important that it happens early on because the level the, the playing field is level right now in the sense that we're all experimenting with it and we all have the the ability to experiment with something that's new to everybody, but the the longer that access is restricted for some parts of the of the population, uh, the more that, again, we're going to see this massive technological gap between those who have access and those who don't have access. Well, I'm hoping that by the end of this, this session that we would uh, be walking away with very, very actionable um, steps and maybe a collaboration that's going to bubble up here. Um, but I, I, you know, one of the things that I think would be amazing and I've witnessed is where, where AI is used to help us better communicate with each other, where uh, uh, breaks the barrier of our cultural difference, language differences, where we can speak our language and the other person hears it in their own. But uh, Dr. Chante, as you work between the intersection of technology and, and marketing and slash communications, do, do, you, do you find um the this is do you find that it is possible that we that the technology can help us uh extend those who have access to motivate to extend access and reach and to demystify this this uh, uh the differences that we think we have which are really quite minimal in fact Yes, uh, uh, see, uh, so let me in this, uh, you know, share my recent experience, which we did in our university with the students, especially when we talk about uh, how uh, by using all these uh, technology, we can do the collaborative research across the different universities who, who are situated across the different locations of the world. So in that case, what we did is we tried to make a platform where the two, three university from the Russia and two, three university from the US, they, uh, you know, keep the part of that uh, metaverse environment. And we uh, created a kind of the platform where the student across the different uh, university, they can come up on the same platform and they can uh, join that project together. So this uh, sort of a things is not just enhancing the knowledge of the student, but it is also giving them advantage to work with the students who having a uh, you know completely different cultural different experience uh, their teachers are uh, completely different even there is a language barrier also so these technologies uh, you know help the student to understand the content in their own language because if we talk about the in india though here the students in my university able to understand the english but the russian student maj majorly are not able to understand sometimes so they need the content in their language. So by using that platform, we can easily uh, translate the content in their language and all those people from the different culture, they can work together on the same project. And the beauty of this project has come up that all these collaborative things is actually enhancing the skill set in specifically in terms of the research. When we talk about the technology uh, being in a uh, developing nation and work with the developed nations where the technology is quite advanced in terms of in the US and everybody is quite advanced in terms of the India. But here the student had the platform through all these technologies, they can go about all these joint projects and easily access. They need not to travel. All these costing part and everything is just safeguard. So that is actually enhancing the student that one plus point which we personally felt is another being a professor even uh you know when we have to do a lot of research 
research and um, uh, even you people are also doing the research right so in that case but we have to interact with a lot of people who are working in the industry who are working into the different universities so these platforms is actually giving us the added advantage where we can actually work on a hand on projects we no and need not to go to their location and uh, uh, a five year back for, to do my research or to do my doctorate related any project i have to travel to the different locations of the world i have to travel to the canada and australia just to take the hand on experience because i want to work with that team but due to all these uh, ai advancement on other platforms now i need not to i can sit at yes. the my same country and i can save my time i can work on the multiple projects and that way it is enhancing my skill set yes. plus it is giving me exposure yes. so yes. definitely in education industry there is a blast change which we are seeing through these things and i i would say that is is positive more of positive because uh, previously there is a lot of restrictions but now due to all these technology we have the expansion we can do the experiments so all those things is actually help us a lot of uh, into a development part especially yes so, i agree i think it can help us as especially the, for those who have uh, because i think the world is only divided by in, in t- there's only two kinds there's the have and have not and the rest is just detail that is just there to distract potentially <laughs> uh, or whatever but um but i i imagine if if um, that that with between you know gatherverse there's a lot of metaverse and web3 which i don't think it's over it's just that the bubble and of, of hype is is over but there's Im- immense applications for it in terms of traceability or i can see how one can Im- be through an immersive experience experience what it's like for example we can visit a farm where hanan is 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 working and where the ai can help us then uh, uh navigate the data and ask the right questions that that would drive us so hanan do you do you want to sh- share a bit more on, on this and and sure yeah i was going to chime in um yes, about that piece because what comes to mind in, in my farming world uh, and mind you i'm a nurse i just <laughs> la- i landed into farming because of this nonprofit and because that's what the community told us they needed was help with with feeding and and um and nutritious foods and um to 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 learn sustainable farming so one of the first things that we noticed um was that the locals it, 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 this is a fishing town that that we work in um but the locals were catching very young fish just at the shores of you know of the beach and so what was happening was it was depleting the the source of fish because they were catching them too young and so one of the things that we're using precision feeding and predictive um analytics to help us understand and teach the locals is you know how how long to wait until until the fish is are are ready um getting getting it to where um that that sort of early fishing is eliminated so we're not just um doing our work but we're also teaching the locals and and that's something that ai has helped us do or and, and continues to help us do um that that's the first thing that comes to mind but also as far as access if not for ai and technology we would not have been able to build this farm i'm in the states and i've built this farm over 4 years because of ai and technology and you know the phone and the computer and drones and um and even though i have boots on the ground without technology this would have not been able to to be successful so that's 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 the first few points i could go on and on but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and i i um Christian did you want to say something? I I thought you, there was an expression or otherwise I No, but I can add to this because we we can see AI as something an entity a different thing next to humanity that brings us to the next level. It can enhance pretty much everything starting with those amazing detailed predictions that we just get better and better once quantum computing comes into play in full gear and then we will be able to predict more more about climate more about the weather one of the hardest things to predict if you know and ai is doing a great job and we saw a lot of improvement in this and we also can consider that we can now analyze data we never dreamed of as kids 
for today to have this data together and accessible everywhere on earth to any kind of person who has a computer and an internet, this is power. And this is how we can empower people around the world to take a common collective decision. Don't just get fooled by bad leadership. Tech Leadership Lab is about tech for good, led by good hearts, because we need the right type of leadership also for AI, for ethics, for controlling the right players and the right data. And as previous speakers said here, it's still very biased and we need to make it complex to have all the data together and have all the parties that can access and also to label the data correctly in a way that collectively we get to that human wisdom innovation level where we go further on a beautiful earth that we can refresh, let's say, for future generations to come. Yes, indeed. And, um, you know, we, it's so many things we can be talking about here and I keep having to um, hold myself back. I mean, I work on several AI, ethical AI standards from the uh, use of human generated data to metaverse to neurotech um, to, to obviously the, the uh, one that is most dearest to heart is the, the IEEE 7014, which is about to be released. Uh, maybe this is a plug for it, but what's a standard if it's not adopted, which is about emulated empathy. So then the machine, and I wonder, I wanna have a session, we talk about what the machine can teach us about compassion because empathy without, com uh, without compassion is, is, can be a, a very um, scary weapon. Um, but it, in, in uh, in that also, we are also working on human machine teaming and teaming is about working together. It's not about the future of work. It's about the future of the worker. And, and it's not about the AI taking over. It's how AI and, and human can come together in a way that extends our capacity and extends our ability to actually find joy in life. So, you know, and, and, and playfulness. Um, there is much we can talk about health, but I'm going to come to you, Emily, on that in a bit. Uh, but I want to hear from Eva about um, how how you're using it to actually, because I, I think your work is a good example of teaming um, and creating, bringing out the, the, the joy and, and, and the love within each other. So um, you, you want to comment on that a bit? Maybe we can have a playful thing here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to share about uh, um, basically how to use AI like a game of awareness because all the inner conflict, how we lose peace is because we project ourselves outside separated. So we lose fulfillment and we lose, lose the love field that is the unified field. And there is a process for that. So I made a um, graphic language. I create this graphic language that is the hardware of thought and the five hard disk of memory interfering present. So now we are creating a model that can identify how the, um, the structure of memory intervenes in present perception and how to perceive through resonance that is being present. And so the model will be able to identify how you lose fulfillment in five hard disk of memory that are intentions, fantasy, culture, experience heard from others and experience that you record through a hardware that no one identified before. So the model will allow you to let you know your conditioning and how you lose inner peace, pointing out the conditioning of others. And I'm even thinking about what about if you put all the newspaper headlines for the model to tell you what type of conditioning is in the middle of love happening and how to use NLP models or uh, no, uh, not valuing in communication models, these persons, these people that are fighting with each other or losing inner peace or being sad or uh, becoming emotional because they, they compare what they think with what is happening and doesn't match. And they fight with each other because of different hallucinations not identified in a hardware that is already identified. And you don't discuss with anyone and you don't need a guru, neither any psychedelics or whatever. You just need a model that can insert in your memory updated knowledge about the cosmic joke happening through consciousness, awareness, and teleportation. I don't know, whatever you need to understand to play in another league that is based in flowing through resonance that increase your life force, that, that you read it as joy. Like I'm expanding, I'm like, okay, have goosebumps. 
So what I'm creating now is models as visual references for different unions from different guilds. So like wearables or toys or augmented reality video game or an augmented reality application for the phone or whatever can inspire another creator to identify and use this language um, that I did virtual reality or anything that can create references for other creators to create tools for freedom because creativity now is full of constructs and you serve your country, your beloved ones, you serve your family, your hallucinated lake, a part of the rest of water, your favorite river, a part of the rest of water. I, we make laws, maritime laws for one ocean and the other ocean and I put a factory there and then I make a reserve there and hallucinating with fragmented water. AI could raise red flags telling you, hey, water is all unified. You can't put chemicals there and drink from the tap because it's the same water, but because you have a, like a model that um, fragments what is unified, that is water, and we teach 10 years geographic hydro hydro illogical map, I call it, because it shows you something that is unified, all chop it in pieces, mm -hmm. and with different names and different laws that makes no sense. So AI could be so useful to raise red flags every time a human tries to make a law that will harm a part of hallucinated water fragmented. Yeah. And for a five-year-old kid, that's so easy that making a video game about it will make the kids just say, hey guys, you're hallucinating. Water is just unified, like your organism. You have no separation in between your head and the feet. It's just a nerve system with blood passing through an entire fascia. So we are, we are hallucinating with so much illusory fragmentation that I think AI will be the one to make games saying red flag, red flag, red flag. And because with joy, it's going to be much easier. So no one comes and takes your authority or punishes you because of being completely confused all my life with a hardware I didn't saw before that creates inner conflict, social wars, and environmental destruction. Hey, now I see it. And hey, we can play about it. Let's make it <laughs> joyful. So the post Kala Yuga is just fun because this is so boring otherwise that makes no sense for life thriving and blooming. So that's my perspective. And I make a call to auction for everyone that has superpower skill sets and assets in service of joy uh, to transcend through exhibitions that can be physical or digital or metaverse ones or like a web three scenario with a bunch of holographic tools and toys that reminds you how frequency works and how resonance works, then life is much funnier. And I welcome everyone to live in that perspective. As you say, when you have the technology, but you might not need the technology, you might need to know how life resonates and how holograms or fractals that you are immersed on that made by that and that's creation happening and yes. we have so many things to awaken from love field that for me is like what is to do so, yes yeah welcome everyone you can imagine how excited i was when we were talking because i i've made up this word a few years ago i'm a huge fan of gamification but not everything needs to be a game but sure as hell everything needs to be fun and then we need to move from this uh depressing this uh, sacrifice type uh, living to to uh, 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 gratitude and abundance and, and joyful you know life needs to be fun life is beautiful life is fun and maybe if we manage to actually get past this and 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 have fun being ourselves and loving ourselves we can then love each other more and and get past this uh this this the suffering um, and and the disasters that we've created, and maybe it would be great to, if if um, um, and it'll actually help us with our with our own health and well being, um, and and AI can give us a lot of a, a lot of tools uh, that can help us um, rebalance and and reconnect with ourselves because we have been with uh, for, forgive me doctors in the house uh, medical doctors but modern medicine has been disconnecting our um, minds and our body, our psychology and physiology and just, you know, numbing the communication channels or sometimes even burning the nerves so that you don't even, you cannot communicate with yourself, let alone find joy. But Emily, how, what, in all of your travels and in all of your writings, talk to me about what, what have you found in that and, and how, how do, you, do you think I'm insane? <laughs> <laughs> so so first of all um i mean i don't know how to follow all of that that was amazing i'm just sitting here listening to all of this this is great um i learned so much from these panels it's amazing um 
I think that something that came into my head when you were talking about, you know, gamification and stuff was um, all the world is a stage and life is a game. And I think that's beautiful. I just wanted to share that there. Um, in terms of the insane part, I had this I had this breakthrough moment a couple years ago where I felt like I was going insane. And then I realized that when you breach insanity, you are in fact in sanity. And it was like that breakthrough moment where I was like, oh, okay, I'm fine. I'm good. Like, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what else to add for that. Like, I think, I think the, the, the ethics thing is obviously like the biggest concern with this, like the, the technology will, and our AI has the potential to expand everything we do exponentially. And that's, that's how it's designed. So we need to decide what it is we want it to expand. And we need to make that choice for ourselves. And, you know, tech, that technology that, that we create, which is amazing and all of that be in the end, it's just metal and plastic and glass and hardware. And then it's really the pathways that they shape that are important. And it's the it's when you pump that energy through those pathways that we start to see those results. So how do we engage with that? You know, I see our brains and our bodies kind of the same way. Like I talk about reprogramming the mind, but I don't talk about reprogramming the brain because I'm, first of all, I'm not a neuroscientist. I don't think I'm qualified to do that anyway. Um, and I just try and shift my perspective a little bit, you know, like when, when we die and we, we desynchronize from our bodies, like the brain just kind of sits there, it's left there. But, you know, it's about what, what we pump through our brains that is really most exciting. Um, so I think when it comes to, to using our AI ethically, that's a decision we all have to make for ourselves. You know, it's not about the technology, it's about how we engage with it, it's about how and why we use it. And so for me, I, I feel like the mental health crisis is kind of a key point to understanding how our technology is going to impact us moving forwards. Um, so that that's kind of my target area when it comes to bias and algorithmic bias. You know, we we don't know what we don't know. We don't know our biases as as as, as deeply as we think we do, because that's I see our bias as the framework through which we perceive reality. You know, it's it's the expectations that we have about the world. And then we try and interpret our experiences through those expectations. Um, yes. And so how can we learn to understand why we have the biases we do and then teach our AIs, teach our technology to then teach us that in return? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think life is a matter of perception and response to any set of circumstance. And we have been so framed of what is right and what is wrong, but is it really what's right or what's wrong? And and we've been for so long in, in a state of um, domination, you know, even in our language that we take for granted, you know, um, you know, we use the language of master and slave, even when we talk about relationship between data entities. Um, so we, we have... Uh, a lot of so I, I love when when I was talking about you know the AI having these red flags that will help us actually cap, catch our um, biases when we're not aware of them because that's the most dangerous bias. We can go through the data and fix the labeling, but the the, the bias that we live with that we don't even know we're biased. And that's what one once my daughter said to me, mom, uh, we won't say what city she's in, but that uh, was in, because it was one that I thought had no bias. Because mom, they're so, we're so biased here, we don't even know we're biased. And that just um, just echoed in my head for, for so long. And that's why I I, I think the, the work of the, the 7014 is so important because empathy or emulating empathy, now the, the machine can, can relate, make the person feel amazing. I mean, for because they, the person feels that they're heard for a change, um, but it can also be a, a, a terrible tool because it can also nudge us in ways that um, to to buy something we don't want or to vote for someone we don't want. So the the, the ethical question um, becomes uh, uh, very strong, and I encourage you all to consider. You don't have to pay to contribute, you know, for IEEE standards, and we're there's another one, the 7014.1 about um, large language models. Um, so please do consider, but uh, uh, you know, I, I do think in any of you just please uh, jump in and we're gonna be running out of time soon. So uh, we, whether it's healthcare and 
uh, and there is so much that it can. I personally want to bring, you know, bring uh, AI to augment our capacity so that it can sit at our edge to help us not only normalize but help us look after our own health because we are not a standard of care and we're not all the same, even though we're all the same. But you know, my blood pressure norm is not yours, and and all of these things that we're just like treated like we're batch batch processed. <laughs> Um, Hanan, you're, you're in, in, you're in, in um, helping and move from in, in nursing to, to farming. So it's all around health and well-being and, and also in areas that are struck with disasters because of the climate issues that we have, you know, our behaviors generated. Um, uh, do, do you have uh, um, any words on this for us or, or um, uh, what, do, what do you think we can do to, to actually activate? Uh, because the machine is is being programmed by by us as it's as it were today, maybe not for much longer. Right. Gosh. Yeah. I I would love to have the answers, but what I do know is that there are always downstream impacts of whatever we we do in the developed world. Right. So yes, there's the climate change is being felt around the world. You know, in in Ghana we have rains when when we shouldn't, flooding when we shouldn't. You know unexpected um, disasters. Um, and so all I can say is that by stepping up to, to be the change that you want to be, that's what I did in 2012 because I had a plaguing voice telling me, what if, what if you helped one mother? What if you helped one baby? What if one person was to survive because of your efforts? And if I had just stopped that voice or shut it away or not answered to it, I wouldn't be here today. I, I I had to to shut it off and say, you know what, I'm going to do something. And if it means I help one mother and one baby, then it's worth it. And here I am almost 12 years later. And the fish farming is just one of, you know, a myriad of projects that I've had. And I'm one nurse with a tiny board and an even smaller shoestring budget. Well, but, look at the rest of us now. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow um, I have this farm that will feed probably about a thousand people a year by the end of 2024 and do all of these other things. So I think the biggest message is to do. And if you if you feel that visceral feeling to make a difference, that you should do it. As, as small as that first step may be, it is a leap at the end of the day. Indeed, indeed. Now, Christina, I know your voice and I'm hating to but I know you're passionate about this topic. I am passionate about everything that is around humanity and what can elevate us further. And I would also want to add to whatever said Emily and Hannah is that the mental health issue is real and it's here. It's very close to my heart. I studied human nature together with business for two decades plus. I'm also a medical doctor in the background as a polymath. I went through tons of things from psychiatry, psychology, cognitive sciences, anthropology to understand human nature. And I can see some signs that today our people need us to tell, us, tell them on a human global scale what is happening with AI. I'm glad, Nadia, that in South Africa we see a very big openness for this. But I also see the other side of people who considers this as the evil, as something demonic, as something they don't adopt, they reject and even hate. And when you have hatred, things happen. And when you have climate issues and other issues, you don't want depressed people or anxious people who have this on top of other things. You want decision makers, you want a healthy mindset. And health is one of those things that physical health, mental health together in a holistic way need to be approached. In the general medicine, let's say, you will now have the genetic makeup of people because of AI. You will know their diets, you will know their lifestyle. You will get so close to your assistant that will know everything about you that this is an addiction. It can become an addiction for certain people and for others, a threat. So I think a global education on a global scale where we unite and showcase what AI can do for every one of us without losing our humanity and without, at some point, we won't just answer what makes us human. 
AI is so good with empathy today. People rely on AI to just chit chat on a daily basis when their significant other has no time for them. The, your fridge talks with you in an empathic way or any kind of household stuff. And you take on communication and learns on you because now you have the generative AI. So these things need to be addressed because then mental health issue, it will be, it will impact very heavily the large population, not us in this room and those who are aligned with tech, but the general population. And part of those will be also the climate immigrants and other kind of people who don't have now the water for their lands to farm. And they don't know that they are exist to predict the, what they can and when they can. And based on those data in their region, they can have production. So we need to spread the word, but also to take care to not get confused with the AI and we to lose our humanity that make us so unique and happy. Oh, thank you. And I, I love all the calls to actions from, from, from all of you. So Nezda and, and the entire study, uh, maybe a word from you on this. And I know I'm being pushed to get the, to close, but we're going to steal a couple more minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think you know, okay. personal rec personal recommendation for me is for everyone that does have access to these things to just experiment as much as possible. Because if there's one thing that I've learned about this explosion of new tools is it's not what the fear mongering media or you know certain voices tell us oh it's destroying our creativity it's taking away all of the thinking from that's not been my experience at all i feel like you know using ai as a co-pilot has absolutely transformed the way that i do things on a daily basis and I think for a lot of people that have a lot of fear around this, um, I am working on a Netflix documentary about the future of the internet. And I very often get asked, oh, does that mean that we're all going to be cyborgs? And, and that's where people's minds jump to. And I mean, it's telling uh, because some people are so optimistic that AI is gonna solve all problems, including us, and others think that AI is going to kill us. And I think the only way, you know, really for these two extremes, these two polar opposites to meet in the middle is for everyday people to try these tools. Because only once you try something and you see the benefit and you see the limitations, do you get curious and then you start wondering about the larger issues as well. And that's really how we amplify this global discussion that we need to be having on a consistent basis in order to make sure that there's a bright future ahead of us. There is, but we need to choose it. Dr. Shinti. Yeah, so uh, the final word I would like to say is, uh, uh, you know, when I first time, even I share my first time experience regarding the chat GPT, the first time I just put some question and get the answer, I mind is just blown away. And I feel, oh my God, it's such a good gadget. I get it to get the answer of all my queries. And now, after uh, so many years, when all my students are using uh, these types of uh, technologies to get the assignments and get all the projects, we cannot run away from these things. Let's take it as the honesty that now it being the part of our uh, you know daily lives. So what we can best do is we flip the pictures. Let the student use all these technologies. And rather than thinking that it is decreasing their critical thinking, we flip the question that rather than uh, asking for, we provide them answer. And we ask them, OK, now you provide what would be the right prompt for writing these answers. Mm -hmm. So in that case, they have to use their mind. Yes. So, the way, you know, the way you are using the things is actually, uh, you know, taking care of all the things with technology. It's not like that technology capture your mind. It's about how you use the technology. Are you taking it in the right direction or not? That is mainly as a human being, we have to understood and we have to strategize the things. Yep. As a professor, we are doing the same. We try to uh, come up with such types of generations who can go hand in hand with AI as well as keeping their human values intact, following all the ethical values. Yep. So, yes. <laughs> So th thank you, thank you. I wish we had a little bit more time, but I will just wrap up by saying what I heard is have fun, um, get out of uh, get out of your own way, and, and just go and do. 
be curious uh, and, and get out of the framing and just experiment, uh, to, to Emily's point. Um, um, and um, and I say we all compete not to beat each other, but we are here to compete to complete each other. So let's all come together and let's bring our capabilities and uh, to augment each other's differences. And, and let's, it is up to us. It's just a matter of choice. So let's choose to be brave and happy uh, and, and, and playful. And, and the world will, 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 is ours. I love you all. Thank you so very much for the Thank time. Thank you so much, Lubna. Such, such a nice statement. Rather than competing, let's just complete each other. Complete, I love complete, that. Rather than beat. Yes, I love you all. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thanks, Lubna. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. It's lovely talking to everyone. Yes, likewise. Take